so hello everyone. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so good morning to everyone. I hope you are enjoying before the main KipCon event kicks off. So yes, uh, let's start uh, looking at what open feature have to say. So yeah, a little about me. Uh, I am Meha Bhalodia, like working at uh, Red Hat as a software quality engineer. I mostly work with OCP team, so mostly testing and automation. And apart from my full-time job, I'm also a part of, uh, was multiple times a part of Kubernetes release team, leading and then uh, branch management stuff. So yeah, that's uh, about me. So a quick overview like what we are going to explore. So uh, first of all, I will just uh, start with the challenges we are facing uh, as in our traditional QA processes. Then we will understand like how open feature helps us. And then we will uh, see some strategies which, uh, which makes the effective feature flagging uh, concept useful in your uh, project. And then finally, uh, implementing the feature flags uh, with open feature. So yeah, uh, these are some uh, challenges in the traditional QA processes. So let's discuss. First thing is uh, like balancing the speed with quality. Because uh, as you all know that uh, in today's fast-paced fast development environment, software teams facing increasing pressure to deliver the quickly uh, while uh, still ensuring the high quality. So tight release cycles, continuous delivery expectations, and rising customer uh, demands for stability create a natural tension between like speed and quality. So you need to balance it. It's uh, difficult. It's one of the challenge. So the question becomes like, how do we ensure our software uh, is bug free and stable without slowing down the delivery? So this uh, sets up the need for the new strategies like that enable rapid yet uh, reliable testing. And the second can be like complex and costly uh, test environments. So QA processes have grown more complex, like as software becomes more interconnected and environment specific, right? So creating, managing, and maintaining it uh, would be a little bit difficult. And it can be like also resource intensive, both in terms of time and cost. So it's not uh, uncommon for teams to encounter bugs only in certain environments or to miss issues because they couldn't uh, like replicate all production uh, conditions, right? And uh, lastly, like it's uh, risk of releasing new features. So adding new features often introduces uh, uncertainty and potential risk to existing functional functionality, right? So especially like in uh, agile and iterative development. So rolling out a feature to users without comprehensive testing can lead to unexpected problems that impact uh, users or destabilize the application. So managing this risk while maintaining the innovation is a top priority for QA and development teams, right? So let's see, like uh, here it comes uh, the role of feature flex. So we will discuss like what uh, is the role of feature flags in QA. So yes, the feature flags op uh, offers you a solution to this all the challenges that I uh, shared by allowing teams to toggle the features on and off independently of the deployment process. So with feature flags, uh, teams can test uh, uh, features in the specific environments, like whatever way you want. The controlling the exposure of the new functionality and respond to issues more quickly. So it will save you a time and give you the outcome you want, right? So by integrating the feature flags into the QA process, we can better control testing, uh, testing scenarios and reduce the risk and improve the overall quality. So and now, uh, let's see like how open feature can help us so open feature uh, as said like uh, it takes a feature flagging a step further it provides the more standardized and open source approach that in integrates uh, smoothly with existing testing in the development workflow so it will add some uh, more uh, plus point uh, to, to the already existing environment you have and with open feature qa teams gain a flexible reliable way to manage feature flags across the multiple environments. It will simplify your complex test process and enabling more smarter and um, easy way, right? 
So let's see a uh, more closely look at the open feature. So in short, you can say that it is the standard for feature flagging. So it's good to uh, use the open feature project. Uh, it is an open source, vendor neutral standard design to simplify and unify feature flagging across uh, platforms and tools. So instead of locking teams into specific feature flag providers or creating an ad hoc solutions, uh, Open Feature offers a consistent and a reliable way to implement the feature flags in your uh, applications. So this approach helps you reduce the technical debt and uh, simplifies the integration of the feature flags into diverse uh, tech stacks. So and now the question might arise that uh, why feature flagging? So yes, feature flagging allows teams to manage the release of new functionality more dynamically. Uh, so it's not like a narrow down approach, it's a wide and it's dynamic. So controlling who sees specific features and when. Now this capability is especially like uh, useful for uh, QA teams. So enabling them to isolate the features and uh, using the flags, uh, teams can reduce the risk of new releases and respond to the issues more quickly. So which turns uh, like um, as per the need without the full redeployment. And now what is the goal of open feature? So open feature uh, was built to uh, solve the common uh, pain point in the feature flag management. So the goals are to establish a standardized portable solution for feature flagging and to provide an API which is easy to use and adaptable uh, to any language, framework or uh, yeah, any environment. So open feature focuses on making the feature flagging accessible and sustainable. This day sustainability is also a main concern and so, yeah, it makes sure that it's sustainable across different part of the tech stack and uh, across organizations. So let's see what are the um, main uh, components, the core components of open feature. So open feature is a structured around uh, the three main components. First is API, the second is client and provider. So the API provides a consistent way to define and interact with the feature flags. It will directly communicate with the flags and then the client serves an interface to interact with the flags in applications. And now providers plug into the open feature client to enable the different types of flags uh, and which evaluates the engine allowing for the flexibility and customer, uh, customizability. So together these components, all three, uh, makes a good combination and together these components create a modular, powerful system for managing the feature flags in a wide range of environments. And now uh, I want to highlight this, that this is an uh, open source community driven initiative. So yes, it's open for contributions and you can, uh, if you have any idea to add on something, so yeah, feel free to, uh, dive into it. So it's more than just a tool. It's a community driven project as said, which is aimed at uh, bringing the best practices of feature flagging to everyone. Now with contributors from major organizations and active support from the CNCF. So open feature is cons uh, constantly like evolving to meet the uh, needs of the modern development uh, environment, right? So it's open source nature, which ensures that everyone uh, or anyone like can contribute, adapt and use the open feature uh, as per the need. So yeah, let's see now how we can uh, set up the effective uh, uh, flagging strategies. So there are a few uh, I, I can highlight. So yeah, the first is the importance of the thoughtful feature flagging strat strategy. So feature flags can quickly add value, but to leverage them fully, teams need a well-defined strategy. So a good feature flagging strategy establish uh, guidelines for creating, managing, and retiring flags, which ensures that they can add the total clarity rather than complexity to the QA systems. Now, without a strategy, flags can uh, become a source of technical debt, right? Like if you don't have any particular path or you are just uh, blindly following something, it wouldn't be uh, that useful. So without a strategy uh, feature, uh, like the flags can become a source of technical debt and uh, cluttering the code base and complicating the deployments. So a thoughtful approach which uh, that will help the QA and development teams maintain control over the feature lifecycle. 
and which ensures that the feature flag uh, continue to support. So uh, the second is, I will go a bit quickly. Yeah, so choose the right flags for the right use cases. Uh, make sure that uh, whatever you uh, want, the, explore the feature flags and uh, like for example, we have release flags, experimental flags, and operational flags. So, yeah, you can provide the uh, uh, flags the way you want. And the next comes establish naming conventions and the flag governance. So, to avoid any confusion and ensure easy management, uh, like it's crucial to establish the naming conventions and the governance guidelines for the feature flags. The second, uh, the next is like gradual uh, rollouts and canary release. So yes, this is uh, this will enable the staged rollout approach, allowing the team to gradually introduce uh, features and phases. Uh, everybody know like I hope that a canary release a concept. So yeah, this is the one which can be helpful. The last uh, the uh, the few are uh, rollbacks and the kill switches so it's a kind of effective feature flagging strategy which include mechanisms for rolling back features uh, quickly if the issue arises and yeah lastly the it uh, you should make a strategy of using open feature for standardized flag management as said like in short it's the standard way for the feature flagging now let's see how uh, you can implement the feature flex with open feature. So yeah, I will go with very basic, starting from the basic thing. So this can, this is like to start using open feature. Develop, uh, developers can uh, install the open feature SDK for the chosen language, whatever you want. So open feature is uh, language agnostic and supports the multiple languages, including JavaScript, Java, and Python, making it accessible for various text sticks. So by using this standardized API, uh, QA teams can develop, uh, like integrate the feature flags into their applications. So this is the simple JavaScript example, uh, which will help you to uh, set up the basic uh, requirement. Then next we can go with creating and evaluating the feature flag. So what this co code does, so say for example, this is the basic example. So this is like the new dashboard key is the unique key for the feature flag, which in, the, in this case, it represents a decision to show a new dashboard layout, right? So it is set to false. Uh, this is the default value for the feature flag, right? So if the features uh, flags value cannot be retrieved, it will default to false, and which means that standard dashboard will be shown. And the optional targeting context object is the target key, which is here is user one, two, three. This specifies a unique identifier for the user. It allows the flag evaluation to be like personalized for this specific user. And there are attributes, which are uh, environment and staging. So this object contains uh, additional attributes uh, that might affect the flags evaluation. So here we have taken the environment, uh, which is set to staging. So yeah, which indicates that this flag evaluation is intended for the staging purpose and not the production. So yeah, this is the way you can implement. And the next is context. Uh, yeah, contextual targeting with user attributes. So this is one of the powerful feature of the open feature, it, uh, which is the, which have the ability to target the feature flex based on the user attributes and environment context. So by passing the contextual information, like a user ID, location, or subscription level, teams can customize the experience like for specific user segments. So let's understand like this, uh, snippet of code. So what the premium feature is, I uh, say for example here we ha I have taken the unique, ident uh, unique key for the feature flag which is premium feature. It specifies the feature flag being evaluated which here controls whether a premium feature should be enabled or not. So again this is the false is the default value and which is the optional uh, targeting uh, context which is the targeting key which is user 1 to 3. This key specifies uh, like specifies a unique identifier such as the user ID for targeting the feature flag evaluation. Then again, we have the attributes as we used earlier, like but here the, those are different. Subscription level is premium, which is an attribute specifies that the user has a premium subscription level. 
region is that to US. So yeah, this is the way like this condition allows you to the code to handle the scenario where the premium feature is enabled separately from its uh, when it's disabled, right? So it provides a way to control the different logic paths uh, depending on whether the user should access the premium feature or not. Now, next is uh, dynamic uh, configuration with JSON flex. So open feature allows supports uh, JSON based flags, uh, allowing teams to dynamically configure complex settings. Uh, JSON flags are useful when a feature needs specific configuration parameters. For example, it's a new layout requires particular settings. So let's see the code. Uh, it, I have taken the, uh, you can see the new layout config. So it is the unique identifier for the feature flag I have uh, taken and which specifies the particular feature flag in the provider that we want to retrieve. Now uh, you can uh, give the attributes you want. Here those are the default values, color and layout. Yeah, it's color and layout, yeah. So uh, if the flag cannot be retrieved for any reason, those default setting will be used. So, and this line is used to, like I said, retrieve the representation, like representing the configurations, settings for a layout. Now, uh, what it will do is, like, this is useful for uh, toggling between layouts or designs without requiring the code changes or deployments, right? Otherwise, you need to uh, go to the code and just uh, change it from scratch so yeah this is the next is implementing rollbacks and kill switches as i talked earlier in the earlier side uh, slides like which can be effective strategy so in production it's crucial to have the ability to disable the features instantly like if issues arise um, in production you need to quickly address it right so you can just use this open feature makes this easy by allowing the teams to implement kill switches flag that can uh, immediately turn off a feature without the redeployment. So this flexibility minimizes the impact of bugs on users as uh, QA teams can respond to use uh, like the issues uh, directly by toggling a single flag. So yes, this is the, uh, let's have a look at the code. So the initially like uh, the client is to evaluate the value of the feature flag, which uh, here is named as feature kill switch. Now the get boolean value method uh, is called asynchronously, uh, which indicates that it may take some time to retrieve the flag's value, especially like if it's coming from the remote provider. So next is like uh, the feature kill switch, which is the key for the feature flag, which refers to the specific uh, feature flag in the system which can enable or disable a feature. So yeah, the second thing is, uh, there is the conditional statement. So yeah, whether it, they want to evaluate, you can set it accordingly. And yes, so this, is, this was the kill switch. Now, integrating with different providers using feature. So uh, yes, uh, open feature is designed to work with uh, multiple feature flagging providers, giving the teams uh, flexibility to switch providers without modifying the specification, like the application code. But by like simply changing the open feature provider, teams can use different uh, feature flagging backends as needed. So reducing the locking and uh, providing flexibility. So this is particularly useful for organizations that use different providers for different environments uh, on applications. So this is a simple, like initially we are um, importing the open feature module from the, this, oh, okay, using. Okay, so we are just importing the module for uh, from the uh, JS SDK package, which is open feature SDK for JavaScript. And then open feature uh, is the like standard for managing the feature flags. So yes, the purpose is to like provide the tool to create a consistent and standardized feature flagging experience across different providers as said. And then uh, we have imported the my feature flag provider module, uh, which is like a custom provider class that is likely implementing the open feature provider uh, provider interface and which is like which enables 
the work with the open feature SDK. So the purpose is like a provider is the open feature acts as a bridge between the application and the actual feature you uh, like feature flag management you have the system we have. So by importing this provider, uh, we are preparing to connect the open feature with the specific feature flagging backend. So yes, uh, this is the main like. Uh, strategies you can implement as per the need so yes i will like i would like to uh, finish here so yes thank you for your time Amazing. That was great, Matt. I, uh, so who was any of that new for anybody? Any, anybody brand new to the world of open feature? And this is kind of their first thing. Okay, good. So we got some folks that are like now have some code samples to go and integrate that into your own JavaScript projects because that's really the only language that exists out there. Um, somebody's coming for me after the summit. Um, so Maya, if folks want to find you, they can find you here. If they want to get a copy of your slides, where can yeah. they find those? Yeah. Uh, I will share it like in the schedule. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So you'll be able to find those slides on schedule if you want to get those code samples to integrate in. Um, it's not like grabbing it off a of Stack Overflow. You got it from a conference talk. Um, all right. So uh, we have some time. We got about three, four minutes for questions. Do we have any questions out in the audience for Meha? All right. We do. So, oh, I love this now. Um, we actually have a microphone set up for y'all so you can get the microphone experience. So now, like, shoulder each other to get there. Um, uh, let's see who's going to get there first and who's going to take... Oh, there we go. I think Todd's going to get there first. He's a little bit closer and a little bit faster. Um, yeah, and if you want to line up behind Todd, if you got some questions, we've got about three minutes. So, uh, yeah, Todd, take it away. Yeah, I had a really quick question. I was interested in your example with the object type flag. Uh, I think it was your second example. It, I'm uh, Obviously, I'm familiar with that as a concept, but I'm always interested to see how they're being used and how often they're being used, because it, it seems to me that generally, I think in your example, you had color and layout. Um, yeah. It seems to me generally that people could use multiple flags, especially with some kind of like dependency hierarchy defined between them in places where they could otherwise use object flags. So I, I don't know if you have any specific experience with that, but I was wondering, if, do you have any advice or recommendations for when to use object flags that kind of have like an aggregation of various pieces of data versus multiple flags? Uh, yeah, flags? so I would say that to be honest, I don't like haven't used that as you said. Uh, it's just kind of the basic thing. So yeah, you can explore on the documentation. It might uh, it would be available, I guess. Yeah, because I have I I recall that yeah there are. Uh, there is an opportunity like where you can uh, use the multiple things. So yeah, you can uh, yeah, Thanks. you can check. Awesome. Thanks. Oh yeah, you can reach out to me. I would help you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, so I, I introduced Todd. So if you want to introduce yourself um, and where you are with your question, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, name is Kevin. Um, question is about the the options that you're showing here um, when you get that uh, the value of that feature flag. How, any recommendations on implementing providers and how to handle all of these options and you know, how to be able to move those options from provider to provider? One of the things that you mentioned was being able to plug and play providers. How does that work with the options? So um, I'm not very sure because uh, right now, like uh, whatever I'm working with, uh, open feature is not that useful, but it's because once when I started contributing to the open, I was looking at the CNCF project. So I don't have like any specific recommendations for the providers to use, but uh, yes, <laughs> need to check with the documentation as said. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and the open feature booth will be here. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So if you do have questions, it could be there. All right, we got about a minute and, and five seconds left for the last question. So go ahead. Uh, this is Ganga. Uh, nice talk, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, so my question is, you went through how to integrate open feature. You know, uh, I get all that. Uh, can you share some example in your case uh, under what automation scenarios you used open, you know, feature flags and how that helped you? Uh, you mean like uh, you are asking for some real world project which is uh, using the open feature, right? Not the real world projects. In your use case, your title said uh, automation, right? You know, usage of feature flags and automation tests. Yeah. If you can share an ex share some examples of 
how and where feature flags can be used in automation? So uh, say for example, if uh, your organization has some application, right, where uh, there are so many uh, like uh, a code, a long code, where it is hard to debug each and every line. So you can use, this is the more generalized way where you can uh, implement this as a standard way and put it. So, so what would be the benefit is you don't need to get into the line by line code where the, there is a whole big project. So this, uh, this way it would be useful. Amazing. So we're actually just a little bit over time, unfortunately. But if there are more questions that are out there, and I, and I see there are, there's one more question. Um, there's going to be, so are you available for, yeah. for some questions during the break? Yeah. yeah awesome. Sure. And we do have a little bit of a break now. We've got like a half hour break between this talk and the next one. Um, so you got a little bit of time. Next up, uh, just before we all disappear, um, next up is going to be uh, migrating to open feature at scale zero to billions with Shachan and Justin. Um, but can we give one huge, huge round of applause for Meha. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Meha. Yeah. Amazing.